Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Representative Christy Houlihan's Housing Resources Telephone Town Hall. This is her 81st town hall since joining Congress. My name is Aubrey, and I'll be moderating tonight's conversation. During this telephone town hall, Christy will introduce Dolores Colligan, the Director of the Chester County Department of Community Development, and Ashley Chambers, Senior Vice President of Community Impact for the United Way of Berks County. If you'd like to ask a question of Christy or one of our panelists, please press star three, and you'll be connected to one of my colleagues in Westchester, Reading, or Washington. Please note that we also do have screeners and panelists on the line that are able to speak Spanish as well. Si necesitas hablar con alguien que habla español. I also see a number of folks tuning in through our website. So as you submit your questions there, please include your first and last name and town in case we need to follow up with you. For the host herself, Chrissy Houlihan is an Air Force veteran, an engineer, an entrepreneur, an educator, and a nonprofit leader. She represents Pennsylvania's sixth congressional district, which encompasses all of Chester County and the southern portion of Berks County, inclusive of the city of Reading. She serves on the House Armed Services Committee and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. If you're interested in learning more about Chrissy, head to houlihan.house.gov. Our agenda this evening includes opening remarks from Chrissy. Then Chrissy will introduce our special guests and ask them opening questions. Afterwards, we will move to our live question and answer period, including online questions. We will hear from you, those who are tuning in. Again, if you have a question for Chrissy, press star three. And if your question is outside the scope of tonight's telephone town hall topic, we're really glad you called and are joining us. And you can contact our office at houlihan.house.gov if we're not able to get to your specific issue tonight. With that, I'm proud to introduce our United States Representative, Chrissy Houlihan. Thank you, Aubrey. And just making sure that you can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Uh, welcome. I want to echo Aubrey's welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this really important telephone town hall tonight. Uh, tonight, we are coming together to address a very pressing issue that surrounds housing affordability and accessibility, as well as heating assistance in our community. And first, I really want to talk about housing insecurity. Some of you may not be aware, but today is actually National Homeless Persons Memorial Day. And I invite us to pause and remember that there are lives lost every year to homelessness. In fact, at least 10 have been lost in our community alone in this last year. And I'm also thinking about the 436 people who we know are currently experiencing homelessness just in Chester County alone and the many others in Berks too. So today's recognition serves as a somber reminder of the challenges that many of our neighbors face, and it underscores the urgency of our collective efforts to address homelessness. And for those of you all who are interested, the reason why this is, uh, that is that day of observation or Memorial Day is this is the longest night of the year. Nationally, homelessness has risen by 12% this year, and experts suggest that this one-year large jump is due to rapidly rising rent costs and the conclusion of pandemic-related protective measures. Our veterans who have served our nation are disproportionately impacted by homelessness. In fact, it is estimated that about 35,000 veterans are currently experiencing homelessness in the United States, which is a 7.4% increase, 7 increase from last year. So the reality is very simple here. Housing costs are too high across our country, but especially here in southeastern Pennsylvania. The housing landscape in our counties varies considerably. In fact, the average single family home price in Chester County is $500,000, compared to the average single home price in Berks County of $310,000. And rental payments reflect that same disparity as well. So the average rent in Chester County is $1,500 and $1,000 in Berks County. Recognizing the challenges that are faced by many of our households in our community, we have many, many vital resources available to help. One is the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, sometimes referred to as LIHEAP, which I've supported during my time in Congress. And it provides critical support to families in need and offers cash grants that range from $300 to $1,000 based on household size, income, and energy source. 
and the recent injection of $3.7 billion in funding by the Biden administration enhances that program's ability to help and assist with energy costs, too. In addition, there's something called the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, or ERAP, and the Whole Home Repairs Program, and it offers essential support to those who are facing housing challenges. So ERAP has served 3,545 households in Chester County between January 2021 and March 2023, while the Whole Home Repairs Program has helped low-moderate income homeowners in making necessary repairs. Data for Berks County is not available in either of those cases. There are encouraging developments also on the horizon to reduce energy costs as well. We as residents of the 6th Congressional District are benefiting from a decrease in utility costs this year compared to last. Our electric and gas utilities adjusting with something that's called price to compare show that this that our prices are actually going down. And this coming uh, coupled with the upcoming IRA rebates for energy efficient home improvements underscores our commitment to making sure that housing is more sustainable and more affordable. At the federal level, I want to make sure that we also emphasize a couple of things that are going on. Some legislation that will hopefully make home ownership and housing more affordable and more accessible, including the BAH Restoration Act, the Helper Act, and the Build More Housing Near Transit Act. And lastly, the Affordable Housing Credit Improvement Act. Programs like the Home Efficiency Rebate and Home Electrification and Appliance Rebate Program will also soon be available to help incentivize energy efficient home improvements as well. So you can tell from all of these different pieces of legislation and all of these different programs that are out there, there's a lot of complexity to these issues. And we need to make sure that we're aware of all of the different community organizations and nonprofits that are here and ready to assist resources like Berks County, they have something called 211. They also have the Berks Coalition to End Homelessness, the MedEd Special Arrangements Assistance Program, and Helping Harvest. And these are all valuable resources for those who might be in need. But for tonight's conversation, I'm really pleased to have two experts. For those who maybe are, are tuning in to one of their first telephone town halls, we try really hard with these conversations to drill down very deep on a specific subject matter, and we try to make sure that we bring experts to the conversation to be able to answer your questions. And so tonight, I'm really pleased to have two guests joining us, Dolores Culligan, who's the Director of the Chester County Development of Community Development, and, and also we are joined by Ashley Chambers, who's the Senior Vice President for Community Impact for the United Way of Berks County. So in just a minute, I'll let them introduce themselves. But to kind of sum up, the challenges that are surrounding us in terms of housing and heating resources are significant. We know this. But we also know that together as a community, we will be able to work towards solutions. And we also know that by being informed and engaged and by being advocates for necessary changes in legislative measures, we will make lasting impacts on the lives of ourselves and of our neighbors. So I look very much forward to this conversation tonight. Uh, and we have the opportunity now to pass the conversation over to our guests. Um, and with that, I have the opportunity to introduce again our wonderful panel. Dolores, I'd love to start with you. Would you be okay. able to take a, a brief minute to introduce yourself? Um, yes, good evening, everybody, and thanks for having me. My name is Dolores Colligan. Um, as uh, Congresswoman uh, Houlihan said, uh, I am the director of the Chester County Department of Community Development. Um, we uh, administer federal funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, to support the uh, development of uh, affordable housing um, and also to address the uh, issues of homelessness that exist within our community as well as um, other federal sources that address our public infrastructure, construction, community facilities, and the like. So again, thank you for having me, and I, and I look forward to participating this evening. Awesome. Thanks. It's great to have you, Dolores, and uh, I look forward to questions. Uh, Ashley, would you also mind unmuting and taking a few seconds to introduce yourself as well? Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman, Congresswoman uh, Houlihan. Um, I'm Ashley Chambers. I'm the Senior Vice President of Community Impact at the United Way of Berks County. 
been in my role for a little over four, uh, for close to four years. And at the United Way, we work to improve lives through investing in programs across primarily four focus areas, um, health, education, financial stability, and safety net services, where a lot of the housing and utility assistance um, falls into. Thank you for having me tonight. Oh, you're, you're very, very welcome. Um, and the way for those who are tuned in uh, maybe for the first time to our telephone town halls, not only do we try to focus deep on one subject matter, but we also try to start the conversation with some of the things that are top of mind, maybe most frequently asked by people or things that, that people would, would inevitably ask while we're waiting for people to come online with their questions. And so I ask a, a couple few questions to sort of prime the pump. And so my first question is for Dolores. Um, you and I have recently spoken about the increase, and we mentioned this in my opening remarks, in monthly rent for people in Chester County in particular. And this has really become a hardship for many of our community members who are limited in income, uh, particularly as we probably can imagine with seniors and with families as well. Unfortunately, uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and you mentioned uh, this organization, federal organization known as HUD, has not actually increased funding. And what has this uh, impact, what has been the impact that this has had on your department in Chester County, and what is the Chester County Department of Community Development able to do to address the housing stability and affordable housing issue? Yes, um, so thanks, thanks, for, uh, thanks for asking that question, Chrissy. Um, well, you know, I want to I want to stick to some positive because we've been we we've been actually very successful in Chester County over the last several years in being able to develop affordable housing, although the uh, demand is greater than what we can supply be, because of the the funding, as you mentioned, and also uh, because of some other factors, zoning, NIMBYism, etc. So. Regarding development of new affordable housing units for households with incomes up to 60 but no more than 80% of the area median income, since June of 2022, Chester County has been able to rehouse over, um, over 150 homeless households and added 111 affordable housing units to our inventory uh, throughout, through 2023. The county's goal is to develop 1,000 affordable units over the next 10 years. Currently under development is Willows at Valley Run in Callan Township with 120 units of one, two, three bedroom general occupancy and Hankin Manor in Phoenixville with 51 bedroom units for seniors age 62 plus. Um, expected to break ground in 2024 is the Villas of West Whiteland which will be located at an Exton, West Whiteland Township. That's gonna provide us with 35 units of bed general occupancy with an additional seven um, additional market rate apartments. Once these units are brought online, the county will have developed over 300 units by the end of 2024. Um, we are currently at our, uh, a 30% of our goal of developing those 1,000 affordable units. So despite all of this, so the challenges faced with every one of these developments, as I mentioned, is the demand is greater than the supply. Willows at Valley Run and Phoenixville Manor opened up their pre-application processes in April of 2023, and both developments received over 500 applications for these 111 units. There are currently over 3,500 households on the county's waiting list for affordable rental units such as these. And as you mentioned, homelessness has increased nationwide, and in Chester County, the 2023 point-in-time count of 436 people was an 8.4% increase over the previous year here in Chester County. So affordable housing is a countywide pro pro problem, but in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, decisions about land use, zoning, and other tools that can often be utilized to pave the way for affordable housing development are in the hands of our municipalities, not the county. And in Chester County, there are 73 municipalities all with their own zoning and development regulations. These challenges lead, led to actively seeking more creative solutions for a housing development to maximize resources and ensure that low to moderate income county residents have access to safe and affordable housing. So some of the things that we're, we're doing here, my department in conjunction with our planning commission and our board of, super, uh, board of commissioners, um, is, um, is uh, looking at um, 
municipal flexibility that could consider zoning changes to allow unified mixed use developments as an example, or allow allowance of additional low density housing, such as accessory dwelling units, or reducing the minimal building lot size, um, waiving some of the stringent parking zoning that we have when a development is being built. Um, these are some of the things that we're encouraging uh, for our affordable housing development, uh, giving bonuses uh, for working with the municipality to identify maybe municipally owned land that could be donated to a developer, uh, saving uh, the, the funds uh, for infrastructure and whatnot by coming to the county, uh, municipality of borough, and uh, applying for community revitalization program funds or CDBG funds to be able to put the infrastructure in the ground to allow a development to happen. Um, these are some of the creative ideas and solutions that we are working on and towards. I know that there are at least six of those 73 municipalities in Chester County that are currently working with the Planning Commission to look at their zoning ordinances to see if there's flexibility in providing that kind of uh, those kinds of opportunities to continue afford, uh, the development of affordable housing. Um, you mentioned the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, or ERAP, as we all come to know it as, uh, here in Chester County. Uh, we received over 50, uh, about $54 million um, in, those, uh, in that uh, source of funding. Um, we uh, have been administering that, as you mentioned, since uh, early 2021. Um, at this point, um, we'll be generating uh, a report that shows to, uh, at this point how many households have been uh, uh, served. Uh, you mentioned since March 2023, uh, I think 3,500 you mentioned, and, and that really has increased to about 4,500 households that have been assisted with ERAP, uh, and, and they have been able to remain in their homes avoiding eviction. Um, whether that's uh, with rental assistance, utility assistance, or a combination of both. Um, that was, um, you know, COVID pandemic funds um, that uh, are running out, and, and so there is some concern um, that when this program is, uh, the funding is gone, um, you know, how are we going to support um, these folks that are in need, uh, going into eviction in need of this type of assistance. Um, so we're working on different options there, some housing stability service type programs and things like that uh, to keep people where they're at. Mm -hmm. uh, the state-funded Whole Homes Repair Program here in Chester County launched in September 23. And uh, to date, uh, I know from the partners who are administering that program that they've received about 200 applications from homeowners. That, have, uh, that we can assist with home repairs up to $24,999 to specifically help remediate code-specific repairs that address habitability and safety concerns and provide measures to improve energy and or water efficiency and make units accessible for individuals with disabilities to be able to, um, to, to live in place, to, to age in place in your own home. Um, if any advocacy needs to be done here, uh, this, this was a, a this was an ARPA-funded program through the state. Um, there wa this program was um, slated to uh, continue to be budgeted in our state um, budget. Uh, however, the state budget just passed, and the whole homes repair program was not included in that uh, because they, uh, they're trying to change some legislation and there needs to be codification and whatnot of those changes, um, and that hasn't happened. Um, so, if advocacy needs to be done for more funding for home row home repairs, uh, that needs to be done at our state level for that. And finally, some, something that we're, we're hitting up against right now that, you know, reflects the question that you asked me about the HUD budget is really specific to the public housing authorities and our housing authority of Chester County's budgeting, most specifically the Housing Choice Vouchers Program or what people still call the Section 8 program. So HUD increased the fair market rents for 2024 by 19%, which is huge. Um, and as a result of this, our housing authority has had to put a hold on issuing any new housing choice vouchers until further notice. Um, the housing authority has asked all landlorders, landlords that participate in the housing choice voucher program to maintain their rents at the 2023 fair market rates 
and, and or if an increase must be initiative, they have been asked to limit the increase to 90% of the new 2024 fair market rents. So what does this mean? A one-bedroom apartment in Coatesville that may have rented for $1,140 a month in 2023 may be increased to $1,224,000 a month. That's an $80 a month increase. I didn't do the math times 12, but when you have someone in a one bedroom on a housing choice voucher um, with an increase like that, um, they more than likely won't be able to support that increase because of their income. So this is, a, this is another issue that we're dealing with here. Um, I did hear good news from our housing authority director that most of the landlords are willing to continue to support the program um, and, you know, and, and, and work with these numbers, at least for the time being, uh, until we see what our federal budget looks like. So those are some <laughs> of the things that we're working on here, um, both positive and, you know, some negative, but we, um, we continue on. <laughs> no, I really appreciate it, and I know that we have had these conversations, and you're, you're uh, clearly so incredibly knowledgeable about kind of all of the ins and outs of what's going on. And your point is very well taken that at the federal level, we are have yet to pass the appropriations budgets for this up for this year that we are, are, are supposed to already be done with frankly. And, and this kind of issue of making sure that we're taking care of the least among us is definitely something that's um, that needs to be addressed and is pressing. I'm very, very grateful for all the work that you do. Uh, Chester and Berks County are enormously uh, generous people, and it's it's sometimes hard for us to recognize that there are really people who are in need in our communities, mm -hmm. uh, and they're clear they're clearly clearly are. Uh, and I'm grateful to you for for the work that you're doing there. If it's okay, I'll turn over to Ashley. Uh, Ashley. Uh, we also have the opportunity to work with the United Way. Our office does a lot, but not everybody is uh, completely familiar with what it is that United Way is doing in terms of the services that you provide our community with things like housing and utility resources. Would you be able to provide a little bit of information there? And again, a reminder to people who are on, if you have questions, please talk to the folks from my team. Star 3 is a way to do that and also online. I'll turn it over to Ashley. Thank you. And uh, it is important to point out that, you know, depending on what community people live in, you know, each United Way may provide different services or have um, different areas of focus. So specifically here in Berks County, as I mentioned, we are working to improve lives of everyone in Berks County by either inspiring collaboration, volunteerism, and providing financial support to build a stronger community. And Primarily, we do not provide direct services. However, um, we do invest in a number of organizations um, focused on housing, focused on utility assistance through grants and annual investments each year. So organizations like Opportunity House provide emergency shelter, um, rental and utility assistance through Salvation Army, um, homeless prevention, um, as you mentioned, um, the Berks Coalition to End Homelessness, you know, really looked at our entire community to um, determine how best to um, kind of utilize the resources that come in through HUD. Um, different organizations provide case management connections to other resources like 211, which we provide financial support. Um, services are even available for special populations like survivors of domestic and sexual violence, veterans, and unaccompanied youth, which is a, a population that we don't always think about as um, needing help or assistance with housing. Um, many youth will be couch surfing. Technically, they are homeless and there are services for, for them available. And we also manage the process to distribute the emergency food and shelter program dollars that come to the county through FEMA under the McKinney-Vento Homeless Act. Um, and then, as I mentioned, 211, which is statewide, so anyone can access those services. Um, and those are, uh, that's how we support with housing and utility assistance here. Thank you. Um, incredibly important information. I had the chance to be up in Berks uh, yesterday uh, visiting some really cool kind of public-private uh, relationships to try to build out uh, affordable housing 
and uh, this was in partnership with some folks who were working at the high school level in the trades and also people who were working with Habitat for Humanity and some ARPA money, which is the American Rescue Plan money that comes from the federal government. And so there's definitely a lot going on in Berks, uh, and I'm appreciative of your work. Uh, this is the point when we hand it back over to Aubrey to tell us if, if there are any questions that we can be helpful on, it, on answering. Hey, Chrissy. Uh, thank you. And just as a reminder to press star three if you'd like to ask a question. I see that we have a couple folks who are now in the queue um, and some online questions. So we will start there. So, Chrissy, our first question is from Jeff in Spring City. And Jeff asks, uh, last year was a relatively mild winter, but my heating costs were sky high. What's been done about our energy costs here in southeastern Pennsylvania? Hi, uh, Jeff. I hope that you are uh, able to listen um, still online, uh, when, wherever you are out there. Uh, I'm going to give you some what I hope is good news and some good news, and, and but also temper it with the reality. You're not wrong. You know, housing uh, costs are quite high. Uh, ha uh, heating costs are high as well. Pennsylvania is one of those places that has a really rich and complicated relationship with energy. Uh, what we've determined by looking at some data is that most people in the United States will indeed spend about the same amount they did this year as they did last year to heat their homes, you know, in, in 2024. Uh, but, ha but the good news is that Pennsylvania 6, again, the place that we are all, that we all call home, will likely actually experience decreases to the cost that we felt last year. And let me give you some data on that. Uh, in the electric arena, uh, Chester County uh, will, has, will experience a decrease from 9.67 cents per kilowatt hour uh, to 8.9 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's about an 8% decrease. That's good news. Uh, in Berks County, folks from Berks, 12.12 cents uh, per kilowatt hour down to 11 uh, or so cents per kilowatt hour. That's a 9% decrease. That's for those of us who are electric. That's what we use for our source of energy. For those of us who are in the natural gas uh, bucket, so to speak, PICO is anticipating a decrease from 54 cents per CCF to 38 cents roughly per CCF, which is actually nearly a 29% decrease. And Burke's uh, UGI utilities is expecting a, a decrease as well from 77 cents roughly to 45 cents roughly, uh, again, a 41% decrease. So this is all good news for those of us who are in this area in terms of what we can anticipate. And we do all hope that we will have a mild winter as we had before. I have seen all kinds of different predictions about what it is that we will be experiencing. But what I also would share in terms of good news is that there's been a lot of work to try to make the amount of energy that we're using also decrease as well. And so some of those things that we're doing come from federal legislation that is becoming um, within the next you know, half a year or so a reality for us here at home. One of those is something called the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act. And it's providing a bunch of different rebates and tax credits for those of us who are homeowners to make sure that our house uh, holds are more efficient and therefore that we're using less energy. Um, and so as we're using less energy, um, for example, when we are electrifying um, our, our house or whether we are upgrading or modifying our appliances to be more energy efficient, those are things that are part of the rebate program of the IRA, pro, uh, IRA uh, tax program. There are also tax credits, as I mentioned, to be able to provide tax credits for people who are making their homes um, more energy efficient. Uh, in terms of both single-family and multifamily housing uh, as well. And then for those who are of us who are perhaps making decisions about what kind of vehicle we're driving, there's also incentives for us to be able to use more energy-efficient vehicles or cleaner vehicles as well. So those are kind of some of the things that are trying to reduce our, our dependence on some of these things that are, are so expensive. Um, we also mentioned a little bit about the whole home repair program. Um, you were speaking a, a little bit about this, Dolores, and, and I believe you were mentioning that this was uh, being uh, funded by the um, American Rescue Plan and some of the pandemic funding as well. This allows us to be able to modify and, and repair some of our homes so that they are more habitable and safe and uh, more affordable to, to heat as well. 
Uh, if it's okay, now that I've kind of gone over the good news, I also wanted to hand it over possibly to Dolores and Ashley, if it's appropriate to talk a little bit about LIHEAP as well, uh, a program to help us be able to afford costs if we're not able to afford them at the price that they're being presented at to us. So I'll turn it over to Dolores, please. Yeah, um, I know. I know that the LIHEAP program is open. Um, we we don't administer that here at the county um, to uh, to to uh, apply for the low income house homeowner energy assistance program. I believe you have to go onto the Compass site and apply there. Um, so I, I wish I could tell you more. Let me see here. I am looking at the deadline to apply for LIHEAP in PA is April 5th of 2024. Um, the applications opened on November 1st of 2023. You can apply up till April of April 5th of 2024. Um, and um, that's all I can give you for here, Chrissy. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. No yeah. worries. This is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ashley? Uh, just, just to add, so you can apply uh, online at Compass, or you can print out an application and yeah. drop it off at the local county assistance office. And um, some organizations may also assist with helping to fill that out. Um, mm -hmm. And that's uh, something you can um, call 211 to find out what, what local agencies can assist with, with filling out the application. That, that's awesome. And one piece of data that I, um, I asked our team to run before this call was to try to understand there is this kind of misconception about the fact that we are in a, a, a generally speaking, a place in Pennsylvania that is uh, less in need than some other places. But the reality is in the Pennsylvania six, when we try to look at the data about the number of households are, that are in our congressional district, we estimate that it's about 250,000 households. The reality is that we believe about 32,000 or roughly, you know, 13% of our households are eligible for LIHEAP. And LIHEAP, again, is, uh, is a grant. It's not something that needs to be repaid. It's based on your si household size and your income and the kind of fuel that you're using. Um, and it allows uh, uh, people who are eligible and qualified for it to reduce their heating bills that they're experiencing. So, uh, 13% of our community is, is a decent, significant amount, and so uh, expect that if you might think that you're in one of these categories to please reach out, uh, as mentioned, and, and apply. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can move on to see if we've got any other questions. Hey, Chrissy, we are going to go to one more online question, and then we have a couple of folks lined up in the queue to ask live question. Uh, but first, we are going to Lisa from Exton online. She said, uh, Representative Houlihan, it breaks my heart to know that some of our veterans are homeless. What is being done about that? So hi, Lisa. Yes, um, I actually had the chance to visit again this week with our uh, veterans uh, hospital in Coatesville. We have um, a very large veteran population, and I'm a proud veteran myself, and I take it very seriously, the obligation that we have to take care of the people who have served and protected us. Uh, my dad and my grandfather served as well as my brother and many of my, of my cousins are active duty right now. I'm also really happy to be able to serve on the Armed Services Committee and specifically on the Armed Services Committee. There's a, uh, a working group uh, um, that is focused on the quality of life of our active duty men and women and as they transition into their veteran lives. Veterans issues are some of the most bipartisan issues that you can find in Congress. It's really hard to find somebody in Congress that isn't you know, working hard to make sure that we're protecting our veterans. Uh, there is some legislation, uh, specifically one that's called the Home for the Brave Act, that does allow for more housing opportunities for our disabled veterans. Um, it exempts service-connected disability benefits as income, which is important when it's determining eligibility for this housing assistance through the HUD that we've been talking about today. These kinds of solutions are really critical. When I was at the VA earlier this week, we were talking about, you know, what the what the future of the Coatesville VA looks like, and making sure to protect housing opportunities for our veterans is definitely high, high, high on the priority. 
Also, uh, Lisa, this year, the House passed um, an appropriations bill, one of the few ones that we've been able to pass that provides veteran money for veteran homelessness prevention, uh, specifically a quite a big amount of money, $3.1 billion, to, to make sure that we have the money and the resources for critical services and housing assistance. So these are some of the things that, as I mentioned, are really bipartisanally supported. Um, and I hope that when we get back to Washington in the new year that we can finish the job, so to speak, and make sure that it gets through the Senate as well. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the call that there are close to 35,000 uh, people who are vets who don't have sustained uh, reliable housing. Um, and that, unfortunately, is 123% more than we budgeted for, so to speak. So we are making sure that we have the opportunity to provide grants for veteran families to make sure that these fab families are awarded opportunities, meaning money, to make sure that they can find houses, make sure that they can uh, identify more suitable housing and better situations for our veterans. Um, be before I move on, to Dolores and Ashley, do you have uh, anything to add about what we're doing for our specific veteran population when we speak about homes and homelessness? Uh, yeah, oh, hi, this is Dolores. Dolores. Oh, sorry. This is Dolores. So we have our, um, you know, we we have one direct service team here in in our uh, in our department, and that is our homeless street outreach team. Um, and we do encounter from time to time, you know, a, a veteran who is literally on the street homeless. And we have a great partnership with the multi services uh, v veterans um, services uh, organization. Uh, they have their own street outreach team here, and we uh, collaborate with them if we do get a call through our two-on-one coordinated entry system, and it's a veteran. Um, we will deploy our team, but in conjunction with that, we will contact the uh, Multi-Veterans Services Center street outreach team, and they would go together and deploy. We will do what we can, and then we transition um, the services and support then to the, vet, the, the veteran serve, serving organization. So that works out very well. There was a situation like that today, and um, you know through that uh, through that partnership, um, the matter was resolved. The housing choice voucher, the VASH that the person needed, moved forward, and um, this was somebody who was going to be evicted the day after Christmas. Um, and, and, and we were able to stop that from happening. So uh, we, we do what we can to help everybody, but that's, that's a current uh, example of, of helping a veteran just today. Thank you. And mm -hmm. Ashley, do you have anything to add as well? Yeah, I'll just add that similar to Chester County, we also have the, the Veterans Multi-Service here um, providing the street outreach. Um, United Way also invests in Catholic Charities to provide case management for veterans. Um, so there, there, and then there are a number of small grassroots uh, veteran organizations here that do stand downs in the park that are helping to support with transitional housing. So a, a number of services that are available for, for veterans here in Berks County as well. Perfect. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Aubrey, do we have some further questions? Yes. Next we'll be going to Mark in Exton. And Mark, if you're on the line, you should now be live. Hi, yeah, this is Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. We... Hi, folks. Um, I did have a question uh, about um, what's um, really underlying the issue with, say, uh, high rents with um, in, within, like, the Westchester Borough in the area, the whole county, the whole area. Um, is it uh, like greed or is it inflation uh, or is it competition between all these landlords in these rental uh, units? For instance, um, when I was younger at Rose Hill Apartments, I would rent a two bedroom for say, oh, I think it was maybe 365, 385 a month. Now it's like what, 1400 for the same thing and the buildings are 50 years older. Can anybody speak to something like that? Yeah, I, I would love to see if Dolores and Ashley, since you guys are much closer to the source of all these conversations with landlords, if you can 
um, perhaps give some insight into what's going on here. Hi, this is Dolores. Um, that is a tough question. Um, we had an affordable uh, a development here in, in Westchester. My office is located in Westchester. Um, that for 50 years, it was privately owned by a family for 50 years. Most of the folks that are living in that were living there were there for 50 years. Um, they held the rents, at, you know, at, at what we call affordable. Uh, they, they were just a great family to work with. And most recently, um, you know, the the elders passed away years ago. Um, the, the sons took it over, and then eventually, uh, I guess it was about two years ago, um, they sold it to a large investment firm that tripled the rents. Um, we got involved. The Board of Commissioners got involved. We tried talking to these folks. The mayor here in Westchester got involved. And basically, uh, they said, well, well, we'll accept people with vouchers, but if these folks here can't afford the rents that we're um, you know, going to charge, then you know, they basically have 60 days to move. Um, we tried everything we can. When you have a private investor coming in and it's about the bottom line, um, they, they didn't even want to talk to the Board of Commissioners at that time. Uh, some of the folks were able to stay, but many folks had to move on uh, because they just they, they, they couldn't afford the rents anymore. So uh, I don't know how to address that when you're talking about private landlords and private investors. You know, they're, they're buying these homes or renting for investment purposes. Um, and and that's, it, it, it's just hard. You know, you, you, you know, there is no rent caps here in, in Chester County or, or in the state that I know of. Um, so these are, again, some creative things or solutions that we need to work upon. But I know that's not the answer that you want to hear, but um, that, that is a very difficult question. Yeah, it is very hard. Ashley, how about from the Berks area? Anything, um, ob observations or otherwise to add? Um, same thing. It's difficult to answer. There you know, are rising rents, maybe asking more for security deposits, um, but there in general just isn't enough housing to go around um, and at least not enough affordable housing for everyone that needs it. So I, there are a, a number of factors that could go into why the rents are, are increasing. And you know, I, I have no clear answer as to why or no clear way to, to address it at this point. And I think that's something that all of us in the community are, are working on. Yeah, I, I know that from our perspective, this is uh, from our office's perspective and the work that we do, uh, both at the congressional level, but also in, in tandem and coordination with the local folks, the commissioners, as well as our state elected officials as well. We know that of housing affordability and the amount of inventory we have is a huge issue. Chester County and, and Berks are some of the few places in the, in the state that are growing in population and growing rapidly. People want to live here, but we need to make sure that we're providing places for them to live that are affordable. Um, and, and you mentioned, Dolores, in the beginning of your conversation, some of the pressures in terms of zoning or nimbyism, you mentioned sort of not in my backyard kind of stuff. Um, I think we all recognize that we all have to be part of the solution. And yes, there are people out there certainly who are investors. There's not anything wrong with that. Um, but that is, in fact, part of the reality of the, you know, of the economy that we live in. Um, there are opportunities for us, hopefully, to build more inventory, um, be thoughtful about, you know, the footprints that they are there, where they are, and their proximity is an example to, to, um, to travel um, opportunities, the ways to commute. So we collectively have our work cut out for us in this area. And I, I still, as we started this conversation, I'm just stunned by the number of people in our community who are literally without a place to sleep. Um, and then there are many, many more of who we're talking about who are um, spending more than the right amount of money on just being able to afford their rent um, as well. Uh, let's see if we've got any more questions. Yes, I see a few more questions. Next, we're going to go to David, who is on the phone. David, it says here you're just from Chester County, so wherever you're calling in from, your line should now be live. This is David Dorian. I live in Chester County. I have two questions. The first question is, what percentage of our Chester County residents are homeless 
And secondly, what percentage of Chester County residents are having great difficulty in paying rent? Thank you, David, for this very important question. Um, we can do some quick math, but uh, Dolores and Ashley, are, are you able to speak to Chester and Berks County in terms of the percentages of people perhaps who would be considered homeless um, and and then those who are be, are feeling you know unique pressures in terms of just making rent? As our point in time, this is Dolores from Chester County. Um, the point in time count, as you know, we mentioned uh, in the beginning of the call for 2023, January 2023, um, was 436 people. So I believe we have about 500,000 uh, population. So it's, it's roughly you know two to three percent of our population is experiencing literal literal homelessness. Those were people that were on that point in time day in a shelter. And um, I believe there was 16 people that we found on the street that night in the unsheltered count. So that's, that's about 2 to 3% of the population here in Chester County experiencing homelessness. Percentage having great difficulty paying rent? Well, as I mentioned, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program um, it was, is a program uh, that uh, provides up to 15 months of rent um, and or utility assistance if you have a court-ordered eviction or a utility shutoff notice. From the beginning of 2021 to date, we have supported almost 5,000 households with emergency rental assistance. So those are rent-burdened households in the county that got behind on rent, had a court eviction notice, and through that program, we were able to pay the arrearages and also three months of advance rent so that they could stabilize and hopefully keep that housing in the long run. So that's a, that's a number that I can give you. I didn't do the math on what, well, 5,000 and the 500,000, right, is, is 10% of our population. And it's probably greater than that, people who aren't aware that the program is around and that kind of thing. but. That's the numbers that I've got right now for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ashley, do you have a uh, similar story to tell? I, I don't have the, the specifics on, you know, how many people are near um, or in an emergency, but similar to the, the point in time count of earlier this year, there looks to be about 300 people at least on that day during the point in time count that were either sheltered or unsheltered, but still considered to be experiencing homelessness. Um, one thing that, that is interesting is um, those that are served throughout the county, uh, about 76%, it was their first time being homeless or experiencing this. So there is a, a higher number of those who have never been in a situation like this, um, you know, really maybe one crisis away from needing these resources and, and not knowing how to stay in their home or to find the, the next shelter that they need. Thank you. Um, very sobering, for sure. Um, uh, Aubrey, do we have some more questions? Yes, Chrissy, we have about 12 minutes left until the uh, end of our telephone town hall. We do have two more questions. Uh, so for our panelists to keep that in mind to try to get through both of these. And so the next question is an online question before we go to our last live question. It's from Veronica in Cochranville. And she asks, I'd really like to lower my energy costs and if possible, move off the grid. I'm really interested in programming that can help me do that. And she, uh, it seems that she's looking for advice there. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try my best to take that one on. Um, so here's a, some good news. There is a, a large piece of legislation that passed in the last uh, Congress, and it's called, and I keep telling anybody who will listen, it's a strange name, but it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. What it is in, in essence is about half of the bill relates to exactly your question, Veronica, which is, how do we become more energy independent and more energy efficient? And how do we make sure that we're providing 
uh, people and businesses the, the carrots to be able to do that. And so the good news is that the Inflation Reduction Act was passed and it was signed into law by President Biden in this last Congress. And the other good news is that the next step for it, so to speak, is that it goes to the different states and the different states are sort of in charge of making sure that they do all the right things to get all the resources to be able to push those uh, monies down to businesses and to people like you. And so the good news is that Pennsylvania is now kind of in the category that's called funds awarded, um, which effectively means that they've done a lot of the different steps to allow for those, those funds to be released to our state. And $259 million has been allocated to Pennsylvania. And so those allocations will be split about 50-50 between home energy and electrification rebates and tax programs and that kind of thing. So here are some of the things that you're eligible for. Um, There are five big tax credits. One is the new energy efficient home credit. That's for home builders. And it gives up to $2,500 for new homes that are meeting certain standards, Uh, $5,000 for certifying zero energy ready homes and 500 or $1,000 for the same classifications if you happen to be in a multi-family home. There's another uh, program or opportunity called the Residential Clean Energy Credit, which allows for a 30% credit for uh, for the purchase of residential clean energy equipment. So this is things like rooftop solar or wind or geothermal or battery storage. So again, a 30% credit for that. Um, Energy efficient home improvement credits that will also provide another 30% for cost of improvements for your houses, your residences, uh, 600 to $2,000, depending on what kind of equipment that you're purchasing. I mentioned earlier as well, um, your car, your vehicle um, provides uh, I'm sorry, $7,500 for consumers who might be purchasing new clean vehicles. There's also a program for those of us who might be purchasing um, used clean vehicles. Um, And so there's just a lot out there, again, carrots to try to get us all at our homes, but also, frankly, in our businesses and our schools and those kinds of things as well, uh, to be more, to be using less energy to be using different sources of energy, and to be more energy independent as well. So you'll really start hearing a lot more about that because Pennsylvania has transitioned into that funds awarded category. Anybody else from our panel to talk about any of those things? Ah, good to go. I found, I got them speechless. Um, Okay, let's, let's move on maybe Aubrey to our last question. Sure. Yep. We have one more um, question and for Charmaine in Westchester. If you can hear us, your lo- your line should now be live. Hi, this is Charmaine. I'm from Westchester. And my question is, what's the situation with home- homeless youth in, in, West- in uh, Chester County? And also specifically the um, ones who have aged out of foster care? Do either of our panelists have the uh, ability to, to speak into those two things? Uh, on, on the foster care, yeah, this is Dolores from Chester County. On the foster care front, um, I, I, I don't know. Um, that is, um, that, that's uh, managed, I uh, believe, by our children, youth, and families. Um, when we do, uh, when, when we look at the homeless numbers here in Chester County, um, in, uh, when you say youth, um, the, there are some uh, single moms who might be 18 years old. Um, HUD doesn't count that as youth. The youth is under 18 years old. Um, I think it goes up like 14 to 16 or something of that that um, that range. Um, we we don't find uh, youth calling in to claim that they're homeless and seek help. When we talk to, uh, like, the Parksburg Points or the Lighthouse or the Garage, um, what they tell us about youth who may be displaced from their homes or experiencing homelessness is uh, they, they know how to hide. Um, they tend to find their housing by couch surfing. Um, you know, they, they, they're able to stay with, you know, families for a week or two and then move on and things like that. So. In the numbers that we capture, we don't see that population calling in for help in the way that our coordinated entry um, 
system works. And my street outreach team does not encounter youth on the street when they're out there every day. So this came up just yesterday, um, and so we're going to look at that and have some other meetings and talks with our youth centers that, that experience this and, and tr try to get around some of this in the new year. So this Actually, is the, uh, yes. Um, in Berks County, the uh, Berks County Intermediate Unit actually administers the Children and Youth Experiencing Homelessness Program. Chester County is included in that region. Um, and their role is to work with the school districts um, to identify any children within the schools that may be experiencing homelessness and connect them to, to resources. So um, it looks like about 2,000 youth in the area um, would fall under this and are experiencing homelessness. Um, unaccompanied youth, as uh, Dolores just said, you know, they're, they're couch surfing, they're um, with maybe doubled up with another family member. So it's really an unknown and kind of hidden thing to see um, youth and, you know, and they're likely not going to reach out to many social services on their own, but we, we may be able to work with them through the schools, which is kind of the, the beauty of the, the um, Youth Experiencing Homelessness Program. So it's kind of a hidden thing, and maybe there really isn't a real handle on the number of kids that may be in this situation. Yeah, and just from, you know, my perspective, uh, when I have the opportunity to be home, and this last week has been one of those opportunities, we do get the chance to be able to move around in the community and to work with a lot of the awesome people who are in our community who care about our kids uh, deeply. Um, this week just alone, we were able to be at the Melton Center and the Olivet uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club as well, talking to some of the people who work there day in and day out with our kids. Um, and they definitely are noticing um, kids who are in crisis in one way, shape, or form and are able to be supportive of them. Um, at every, we also had the chance, frankly, to, to talk to a lot of people in our community about food insecurity and food scarcity. Um, many of our kids are experiencing that, too. Um, and so it's, it's tragic that we have to have so many people in, in a place in a nation that's so uh, has so many resources in such abundance. Um, and the good news is there's good people who are working on it. The bad news I w is that there are good people working on it. Uh, in Washington, just this last week, there was also a big conference for foster care. Um, so it's definitely something that's also being looked at at the national level as well. Um, if it's okay, I will uh, turn back over to Aubrey because I know we're running up against time. Thanks, Chrissy. Just some final reminders. I know there were a few questions that were asked uh, that were on a different, a different topic tonight. So if we have your full contact information, we will be reaching out to you before we head into the holiday weekend. Uh, again, if we're able to have the appropriate contact information for you. If not, if you know you asked a question and maybe didn't provide that, you can head to houlihan.house.gov and submit your question there, and our team will get back to you as soon as we can. And with that, Chrissy, I'll hand it over to you for closing remarks. Thanks, Aubrey. Um, and thank you to Dolores and to Ashley. Um, really, really important and good conversations uh, because we know that health and safety and well-being of our neighbors is um, probably the most important thing, you know, kind of basic human needs. And I know that we all have lots to learn and lots to share uh, with each other about the resources uh, that are available to us in Chester and Berks County. Um, if we couldn't, as Aubrey mentioned, get to your question tonight, or if you happen to answer at, or ask a question that was perhaps outside of the purview of this telephone town hall, as she said, please don't worry. Um, we will make sure that we call each of you guys back. That's our commitment to you. Uh, assuming that we have your contact information, we will be committed to do that before the end of this work week. Um, and I am very, very excited to wish all of you and your family um, continued and lovely and peaceful holiday season uh, and a great new year. Uh, until next time, I will wish you all good night and thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.